endovascular coiling, basilar apex aneurysm Y stenting technique using two enterprise neck remodeling devices. February 2012. Surgeon and narrator, Dr. Michael Horowitz. Here we see a basilar apex aneurysm that is wide-necked. The arrow outlines the bilobed aneurysm and then points to the wide neck of the aneurysm. Coils will not stay in this aneurysm without using neck remodeling devices or balloons. This is a subtracted view. Here we see our first wire being advanced with a catheter being advanced over it into the basilar artery. This will then be advanced into the left posterior cerebral artery. The catheter is advanced and the micro wire is removed. Now a second rapid transit catheter over a headline of 12 wire will be advanced into the basilar artery. The wire will be directed out into the right posterior cerebral artery and then the catheter will be advanced into the right posterior cerebral artery. Here the wire is advanced out into the right posterior cerebral artery. The second catheter is now advanced over the second wire into the right posterior cerebral artery. We now have two catheters in the basilar artery, one of which extends into the left posterior cerebral artery and the other of which extends into the right posterior cerebral artery. We will now advance a third microcatheter, an Echelon 10 microcatheter over an Expedient 10 wire into the aneurysm itself. Here the wire is placed into the fundus or body of the aneurysm and the catheter is gently advanced over the wire into the aneurysm. It is through this third catheter that we will deliver our platinum coils. The delivery wire is removed and the catheter is positioned within the aneurysm. Here a run shows all catheters in position. The first enterprise neck remodeling device or stent is being advanced into the right posterior cerebral artery through the catheter so that part of the stent lies within the posterior cerebral artery on the right side and part of it lies within the basilar artery. A second neck remodeling device is advanced into the catheter that sits in the left posterior cerebral artery. We now have our two stents in position. A coil is advanced into the aneurysm to hold the microcatheter in position. This anchors the microcatheter as we manipulate the neck remodeling devices. The first neck remodeling device in the right posterior cerebral artery is now being unsheathed and released so that it lies partially within the right posterior cerebral artery and partially within the basilar artery. It has been completely deployed. The second neck remodeling device is now deployed from the catheter so that it lies partially within the basilar artery as well and partially within the left posterior cerebral artery. 
This is our Y stenting configuration. The stents themselves kiss one another within the basilar artery, which they share. Here we are now advancing a different coil as we wanted to downsize from the previous one. The coil is advanced through the microcatheter into the aneurysm and the two neck remodeling devices keep the basilar artery and the posterior cerebral arteries patent. The dome of this aneurysm overlies the branch points of the posterior cerebral arteries, so it will appear as if there is coil actually within the basilar artery itself, but in fact is held out of the basilar artery lumen and the posterior cerebral artery lumens by the deployed neck remodeling devices. Here, additional coils are being placed within the aneurysm. This patient has been fully heparinized, and at the end of the case will be given Integralin, a potent platelet inhibitor, as well as Plavix and Aspirin, two other platelet inhibitors. At the end of the procedure, we've advanced seven total coils. We can see the coil within the aneurysm and all vessels filling. Here is the aneurysm prior to treatment with its wide neck overlapping the basilar artery branch point. Here is the wide neck of the aneurysm. Here it is after treatment with a different view. While it looks as if coil is in the vessel, it in fact is in the fundus of the aneurysm that overlies the bifurcation of the vessel on this angiographic view. The neck remodeling devices keep all vessels open. Here we see the edges of the stents or neck remodeling devices. We are tracing the course of the neck remodeling devices in the vessels. This concludes the procedure. The patient was discharged the following day on Plavix for six months and aspirin for a lifetime. Integralin was given at the end of the case intravenously as a single bolus.